Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. One improvement has been in antibody-based therapies um, targeting ALL-specific antigens. We heard about CD20 incorporated in rituximab in pH negative treatment for ALL patients. We talked about uh, CD19 antibodies or bispecific CD19 antibodies with inatumumab. Another approach is a, a dr antibody drug conjugates. So essentially you have a C19 antibody and you link a cytotoxic to this antibody. There are several of those constructs in development. We were involved in one trial from, um, of, of such antibodies and you actually can see responses with antibody drug conjugates as well in patients both with acute lymphoblastic leukemia but also aggressive uh, B-cell lymphomas. I think this is a proof of concept that with different strategies you can target lymphoid cells and achieve remissions that we were not able to achieve with chemotherapy or in the relapse and refractory setting. So another approach is um, CAR T-cell or chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy. This is essentially taking a patient's own T-cells, transfecting them with a construct that brings the um, T-cells close to the CD19 positive lymphoid or leukemia cells again, and then activates the T-cells to fire and destroy the um, leukemia cells. I think it's a very novel, very elegant approach. It takes some time to construct for each patient individually as in an autologous fashion their own CAR T cells. So the patient needs to be put on a, on a phoresis machine, the cells need to be isolated, they need to be expanded, they need to be transfected with lentiviral or some other, some other constructs and then over time or after time they're given back to the patient. Often in addition to just giving back the CAR T cell product Patients do receive a um, immunosuppressive or a chemotherapy a conditioning or an ablative, not an ablative, but a conditioning regimen, immunosuppressive conditioning regimen prior to re reinfusing the um, CAR T cells. This has first been uh, tested now uh, for the last several years in pediatric patients with ALL, and the responses look quite remarkable. And of course, now we bring it also to adult patients with um, ALL and uh, the trials are some, there are some reports out there, but the trials are just really starting uh, to be conducted. So I do think it's a very promising strategy. It has the potential to, or the remissions that we have seen can be very deep and very long lasting. But I think we need to evade, uh, evade the results in adult patients before we, can, before we can draw any conclusions. We don't have enough data at this point, but it's another another new therapy um, against um, or in the treatment of adult ALL. I'm very, very excited about CAR T cell therapy for acute lymphoblastic leukemias. I think this is where we have the most data, whether we're talking about Carl June's experience at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, whether we're talking about uh, uh, the experience at the NIH, whether we're talking about the experience at uh, Sloan Kettering, we can see now, both in adults and kids, a very high response rate that is extraordinarily encouraging. The challenges as they relate to CAR T cells relate more to the toxicity that uh, is not a question, but more of an expectation. We will see cytokine release phenomena. We will see the hypotension and the fevers. And we're very likely to see neurologic uh, sequela as well. Again, not necessarily severe, but very likely to see some confusion, very likely to see some aphasia that develops. Remember that the context for CAR T cell therapies, we don't want to give steroids. We don't want to give anything to suppress or otherwise uh, minimize that T cell activity. We want that expansion to really take place. We want a memory T cell response to take place. And even though the CAR T cell response, the CAR T cells themselves may fade depending on the vector that's used, CD28 versus the 41BB, we want to know that as a consequence of whether it be epitope spreading or just T cell memory responses in general, that we're generating a long lived response in the context of ALL. Ultimately, my hope is that as we, this technology gets better, 
we'll even be talking about doing CAR T cell therapies in lieu of allogeneic transplant, and, and that would be a phenomenal accomplishment. I think that as it relates to the durability, I'm also very excited about experimental uh, approaches. Again, I had mentioned blenitumumab as a way of rescuing those CAR T cells, perhaps if uh, the disease is relapsing, or perhaps even just saying, okay, we want to administer blenitumumab at these sequential intervals to do our best to, again, non-specifically engage those CARTs before they go away to keep them around for longer. Another uh, opportunity is the PD-1 or PDL one based uh, uh, therapies. Can we uh, exploit that so that we don't see uh, these regulatory T cells ultimately impede the response to, to, uh, to, to our CAR Ts. One thing that's really very interesting about CAR T cell therapies is the, uh, the difference in, in the treatment that each individual patient receives. I think while on the one hand we're trying to ask very important scientific questions as it relates to the type of CAR T cell we use, one of the harder questions to answer is what is the actual T cell infusion that a patient receives? What is the ratio of the CD4 to the CD8 to the CD4 effectors to the CD8 effectors to the memory T cells? And how is that ultimately going to influence outcome in the long run? Very, very interestingly, it may surprise you that each patient is receiving a different ratio of these different types of T cells. Uh, and so I, I, I know that there are a lot of very, very smart people uh, who, are, who are actively trying to better understand this.